Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be doing the second part of an ongoing tutorial series about the texture to color array up. So if you click underneath the YouTube video, you'll come to this uh, link here. As you can see, this is like the public file that I made, which added a little bit of interactivity so people could see what was happening. So if you just click open in editor, opens up and you need to save this as a new patch right now. So you go to patch, save as, and I'm just going to call it tut2 for now. Hit OK. So we now have this patch and this is going to be our framework today for the rest of this tutorial video. So I'm going to focus on two to three main points. The first one is I want to swap out this rectangle for a sphere and then I just want to be very playful and show a lot of different texture effects and generators that we can use inside the cables to make some really cool stuff happen. So first of all, we're going to get rid of the sidebar and this is going to make everything disappear. So we go here, why the width and height, the amount of pixels and columns and rows has now gone to zero. So let's just get this, put it on 100, get this, put it on 100, and then we get this back. So the scale here has been changed by the texture. So if we look here, that is this part with the mesh instancer. So I'm just going to disconnect this for now. And on the mesh instance, I can use the scale parameter to just change the scale of all the cubes. I'm going to put it on one. So first of all, I want to swap all of these cubes out for spheres. So we're here right now. So go to trigger once and I grab the sphere two up. And now with the right mouse button, click and drag and repatch the output from geometry. I'm going to get rid of the cube up. And we don't see anything. Why? Well, if you click in the patch, press F and see flow mode, we've got to push through the new geometry into the mesh instancer. So as you can see, there's no flow here. So click on trigger once, reset. And now we have a bunch of spheres. Awesome. Click in the patch, press F, and then we turn a flow mode. So now what we want to do is we want to um, replace this rectangle with a sphere. So if we look at this, we're generating the vertices here, right? So with the rectangle, we do this. So I'm going to pull this out from trigger once, and I'm going to grab again a sphere two. Now sphere two is similar to rectangle, as in rectangle has an amount of columns and rows. This determines the amount of vertices. Sphere two has stacks and slices. It's pretty much the same thing. So we're going to go here for columns slash stacks. We're going to go here for rows or slices. I'm just going to delete the rectangle. We're going to pull out the sphere two geometry output and plug it into geometry points. As you might have guessed, we've got to push it through by clicking trigger once, reset. Now, as you can see, that's a very small sphere. So we click on sphere two and we put the radius on say 20. Once again, we don't see anything because we've got to trigger it. There we go. You know what? We could make this a little bit bigger. Retrigger. There we go. Great, so we can see a little bit of displacement happening here according to the texture. So this part might be going a little bit fast. Don't worry about it. Once it's set up, you're good to go. So this is where we get the texture to color array up and we unpack the texture like in the previous video and red, green, blue, alpha comes out here. So let me just disconnect this for now and zoom in a touch. Let's get rid of smooth step and the multiply. I'm just gonna delete this comment. So I'm going to make a really simple chain. I'm going to add an array, subtract, and I'm going to grab this, move it over there, copy it with control C, paste, paste. So that's X, and then this is going to be Y, and this is going to be Z. Let's make this nice and tidy. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get this, and in a previous video, we were only adding a black and white texture to the Y component up and down. Now we want to affect X, Y, and Z, those points. So it's really easy. We're going to pull this down. I'm going to zoom in a touch. And we're going to add an array math up. Let's move that over here. This is X. This is Y. And let's add that there. Array math. And this one's going to be Z. Let's just get rid of all these words for now. So X, Y, Z. Okay. 
So I just need to disconnect this one just to start from scratch. So array math doesn't work unless it has two arrays coming in that are the same size. So I grab the X component and I add it to the X component from this. Do the same with Y, I patch it into array two. Do the same with Z and then we get the sphere back. So if you multiply a positive number, it can't become negative. Vice versa, if you multiply a negative number, it becomes more negative. So we want things to go left and right, up and down, and forwards and backwards. So we need to subtract 0 0.5 because the texture to color array is outputting values between 0 and 1 depending on each pixel. So I need to subtract 0 0.5. So I pull out and I grab this value up and I'm just going to quickly patch that into these by just pulling to the middle and letting go. And we're just going to call this subtract 0 0.5. So now I'm going to go to the multiply ops here because that's like the strength of what's coming out from here. So now I'm also going to grab a value and I'm going to call this multiply. And we're now going to plug this into here and this into there. Okay, so so far, so good. This is the basic patchwork. I know it might be a lot to wrap your head around, but basically we just swapped out the rectangle for a sphere here with the mesh instance. We did the same. We swapped the cube for a sphere. And now we've given ourselves control over the separate X, Y, Z components. Okay, so now for the good stuff. Here we've got this FBM noise, and it doesn't seem to be doing a lot, right? But if we grab our multiply and we turn it up, we'll see it has a heavier effect. But there's something wrong. It's all going in one direction. We're subtracting 1, not 0 0.5. There we go. Now let's use multiply. So basically what's happening here is we've got a grayscale texture. It's black and white. So the red, green, blue components are pretty much all the same. They're getting the same data. So we need to change that by using an RGB texture. And what that means is that the red, green, and blue components of the texture are different from each other. So let's lower this multiply a little bit, get it to something like this. And let's make the size of the sphere a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go. That looks more like it. So FBM noise only generates a black and white texture. So let's get rid of FBM noise. And I'll try and explain this as simply as I can. Let's go and grab the pixel noise 2 effect. And let's put the amount of X and Y on 2 by 2. And let's grab this timer and we're going to plug it into Z. And Z is like a way to like animate things. So as you can see, they're all moving the same way. X, Y, and Z are getting the same values. So if we go to Pixel Noise 2, it has a really cool option, RGB, watch this. And let's turn down that timer. So it's really fast. As you can see, things are now going left, right, up, down, forwards, and backwards. We could increase the multiply so it's a little bit more obvious. Things are jumping around a bit. Well, Pixel Noise 2 has an upgrade if you click Loop. They're going to go forwards and backwards and not jump around so much. Now, this is kind of cool. I'm going to lower the speed a little bit. So this is hopefully now starting to make a bit of sense. What you're looking at here is the red, green, blue values. And that's changing the X, Y, Z positions. Left, right, up, down, forwards, backwards. So now let's go over here and put this, for example, on 64 and this on 1. And wow, look at that. That's pretty cool. We've got a completely different effect just off changing the texture that we've got here. We could also put this on 1 and this on 64 and we turn it around the other way. So that's pixel noise 2. So hopefully you're understanding a little bit right now what's happening with the RGB part. Just in case you aren't, let's go to the next one. Let's grab the good old noise texture, white noise. Everything explodes. So as you can see, it's all kind of like moving off in one direction, X, Y, and Z. So if we put it on RGB, now it were like giving different instructions for X, Y, and Z. Turn off animated. So if I turn down the amount, it's kind of like you see the opacity here and the values coming through. But we can also change the effects with multiply. So if we put this on zero, we just got the original output from geometry points. If we turn this up, as you can see, we get this. They're going off in all directions. But if we put noise not on RGB, 
but black and white, watch what happens. See? So that's that problem with X, Y, and Z with a grayscale texture. They're just gonna go all off in the same similar direction. If I put subtract now on zero and increase multiply, as you can see, they all just go off like this. So that's why we subtract by 0 0.5. So we've got values from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and then we multiply, and this is why we then need RGB. So let's get rid of the noise up. So like I said, this is just like an experiment today to just so, show some really cool stuff. It's more of a playful episode. So I'm gonna grab the waveform up, generate four different waveform textures. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna turn down multiply, and I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna turn down the amplitude, so it becomes like this, the line width, and I'm gonna leave it like that. And now I'm gonna plug the timer two into offset X. And as you can see, this is now changing what we see there. So what happens if I get another one of these, and I put that here, and I copy the timer, and I plug this into offset X, and I put this on a, a different time, and then I put this second one on multiply, watch what happens here. See this? So we get this really nice effect. I can change the amplitude a bit to get a different effect. And as you can see, what we've got going on here is this really nice pattern. I know it's not RGB, but I just wanted to show it. As you can see, that's reflected here. We could even just um, increase the frequency, and we get these really interesting modulations taking place with the sphere. So that's waveform. Let's get rid of that guy. What have we got next? Uh, RGB. So let's go for layer noise. As you can see, multi-layer Perlin noise variation. Let's grab that bad boy. So grab layer noise and we turn on the RGB alpha mode. And as you can see, we now have this. We're going to grab the timer and we're going to plug this into scroll Z, which is like pixel noise. And as you can see, if I now turn up multiply, we've got this 3D motion taking place. And that's pretty fast, I'll admit. So let's just turn it down a little bit more. Whoa, there we go. So you can play around with the parameters of layer noise. Uh, I'm gonna put it on layers two, scale 16, and we get this kind of noise thing here. Put it on two, and we get something smoother. Um, you can put it on tileable, which is kind of like a mirror. And then as you can see that there, so I'm just trying to make you aware of some of the cool texture effects that we can use um, in this fashion. So play around with that, there's plenty of settings there. Go wild. So. Let's go to one of my favorites now. This is old school, as old school as it gets. And we go to plasma, and we get this plasma effect. Now, as you can see, it's black and white. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna turn off the grayscale mode. And now I'm gonna plug timer two into time. And look at that, let's lower this. Multiply a little bit. There we go. So like I did with the Twitter teaser, Here's the, the mesh instance section. If we now just like crank that scale up, we get this really interesting effect here. And if we want it to billow out more, we just multiply more, basically. And let's crank up that timer a bit. And then, yeah, look at this. We get this really cool movement, modulation, and shapes. And this is just a good old plasma effect. Gotta love this guy. Put it on 10 by 10. We could put it on one by 10. You can get so much stuff out of this bad boy. It's really, really cool. Look at that. So gonna get rid of this and I'm now gonna put the size back to one. Because I don't want this tutorial to take too long. Now I'm gonna pull this down and I'm gonna grab, for example, the triangle noise up. And they're still pretty big. So let's just turn this down again with the scale. There we go, cool. So going back over here, we have triangle noise and we can get the timer and we can plug that into um, add. And as you can see, this is like changing what's happening over there. So this isn't RGB alpha, but I thought it was a really good cool one to show because uh, I think it gives some uh, interesting stuff. We put it on two, we get like a very different look than the pixel noise effect. So we could also go here now and grab the rotate texture. We could plug timer two into rotate. And if we just slow it down a little bit and we need to turn off crop and then we get this like mirrored texture. 
So you can see we can even create this kind of like fake 3D motion by just rotating a 2D texture. So that was triangle noise. Um, and one last little combo to just round this off. So let's go to whirly noise. That's what you see here. I'm going to add that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a scale on, say, 4. And I'm going to put range A down so we get this like nice smooth fade out. I'm going to turn the multiply down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put timer 2 into um, Z. So as you can see there, now like pulsating in and out. So if I now grab the noise up and I turn off animated and I put it on RGB and then I say multiply, then as you can see, we have this noise now. Um, with the dots and they're coming in and out. And we could also get the timer two and we could plug it into say X. As you can see, these things are now moving around and we're using the noise to kind of like make it like not perfect circles, but noisy circles. So we could like do this now to crank it up a little bit to get a different effect. Uh, we can decrease the amount of noise by using the mount or we can increase it. So. I know this might have been a lot to take in. Um, this was the second tutorial with the texture to color array up. And I'd like to give a big shout out to the person whose name I forgot on the YouTube channel that said they loved seeing me play around in the last few minutes of the last tutorial. And that just got me thinking like, hey, let's just do the second video like that. Bit of technical stuff at the beginning. And then let's just play around with that last half of the video and just show people a lot of the different things that you can do. So that's the end of this tutorial video. I hope it's been educational and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forum. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.